So one of the big missions on this show is the case for municipal broadband, i.e. city-owned internet. And more and more, the one, well, one of the many things that's going on in this pandemic is that people are realizing how essential the internet is to our lives, how it should be a utility in our lives, and how there are still so many people who do not have access to decent internet throughout the country. It's still a very real thing. There are underserved areas all throughout the country. Why are the areas underserved? Is it because we're not able to wire the entire country? Well, no, of course we're able to. It's because we have an organized duopoly amidst the cable companies where they kind of map out territories and one company is the big man on campus in one area, one company's the big man on campus in the other area. Sounds like something a, a mafia would do, Ron. Yeah, it's the same thing. And they dominate an area and they price gouge an area. And their only concern is the bottom line. So if it's not really financially uh, lucrative for them or, or as lucrative as they'd like it to be, they just blatantly underserve an area and tough cookies. And Ajit Pai and the Trump FCC got net neutrality. Net neutrality was the law that designated the internet a utility in our lives. It, it gave it a Title II designation. And what that means is that the internet is a utility in our lives, kind of like flowing water. That means that uh, websites cannot be discriminated. You cannot give higher priority to some websites over others. You cannot create prioritized fast lanes and slow lanes. The internet has to flow like a phone call or like water. That's what net neutrality is. Net neutrality does not allow the government to control the internet. That's not what net neutrality is. That's not what that policy does. What it does do is it protects consumers. It protects consumers from cable companies exploiting them even further. And since that repeal has happened, broadband uh, investment has gone down. Jobs have been lost despite Ajit Pai and the Trump FCC promising the opposite. There are less jobs with AT&T. Broadband investment has gone down. The, the uh, qualifiers for speeds have not been updated in years. So here's something Ajit Pai did recently. Ajit Pai uses bad data to claim ISPs are deploying broadband to everyone. The FCC uh, a while back issued its annual broadband deployment report, finding for the third straight year that broadband is being deployed to all Americans, except for millions of people except for millions of people. As we previously reported, this is from the article uh, at Ars Technica, Comcast lowered capital expenditures in its cable division by 10% in 2019. AT&T is lowering capital investment from $23 billion in 2019 to $20 billion in 2020. And Charter cut capital expenditures from $9.1 billion in 2018 to $7.2 billion. Why is that? Well, because without net neutrality, these companies can get away with either more, even more as far as the horrible service that they offer. So they're cutting corners to please shareholders. Here's what two Democrats who disputed his conclusion said. Uh, this report is baffling. We are in the middle of a pandemic. So much of modern life has migrated online. As a result, it has become painfully clear there are too many people in the United States who lack access to broadband. In fact, uh, if this crisis has revealed anything, it is the hard truth that the digital divide is very real and very big. But you'll find no evidence acknowledging that in today's broadband progress report from the FCC. Instead, you'll find a glowing assessment that all is well. According to the Rosie report, the nation's broadband efforts are all good. They are proceeding in a reasonable and timely fashion, and they are reaching all Americans. This is just not right. Because 18.3 million people lack access. Also, the FCC broadband speed, speed standard hasn't been updated since 2015. And now you see scenarios where people are in their cars outside of a library to try to get decent internet or outside of a coffee shop where their Wi-Fi is still going to try to get decent internet. And here's a response that Free Press gave. Digital rights organization Free Press. The Trump's FCC's repeal of net neutrality also tossed out the FCC's authority to promote broadband competition, protect public safety, and more. The COVID-19 pandemic has made the need to treat broadband as an essential service now 
even more urgent. Here's some more what they had to say. On Monday, this was this past week, Free Press filed comments that condemned the FCC's abandonment of its authority to safeguard internet users and promote universal access for open and affordable internet. The, F the free press filing notes that the court decision found the FCC under Ajit Paiman had arbitrarily uh, failed to address the serious cascading implications of scrapping its Title II classification. The evidence couldn't be clearer. The FCC needs to reclassify broadband as a Title II service. This is the only way to give internet users the legal protections they need to access an open and affordable internet. Title II was the solid foundation for wildly popular uh, net neutrality safeguards. But the law does not mean, but the law does more than that. Title II classification also gave the agency the authority it needed to ensure that vital programs like Lifeline could support broadband adoption and choice. In other words, one of the things that the Title II classification did, other than just assuring that the internet remains a free and open platform, it also called for it to be a utility in our lives, meaning the FCC could actually do something to help underserved areas. Well, now they can't because the internet isn't declared a utility. Instead, it's a Title I classification, which just means it's an information service like, like TV or radio. So they can't do anything about these cable companies and their organized duopoly intentionally underserving areas. They can't do anything about it. So this is why we need net neutrality and we need to go a step further and we need to build internet infrastructure that is state and city owned and municipal owned all across the country, because that puts an end to the battle for a free and open internet once and for all. If we have net neutrality written in the charters and we have city owned internet all across the country, and we can do that one community at a time, it's already happening. This is the way we assure a free and open internet um, for the foreseeable future. This is the way we prevent a scenario where we're telling our children and grandchildren what the internet used to be like. You mean a comedian could just stream in their living room? Yeah, that used to happen. We don't want to be telling those stories. We want the internet to stay free and open. As my friends at Fight for the Future would say, we got to keep the internet weird. <laughs> All right, so there's a little, uh, there's a little uh, net neutrality muni broadband update for everyone. Get you Together and make it our own. Get your news on with Ron. Don't you wanna know what's going on? We're getting on.